This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. News is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. Happy Friday, April 29th. I'm Deanna O'Donnell here for News 25 on KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio. Well, Nye County voters got a chance to hear from another round of candidates Thursday evening during the third and final Republican town hall debate held at the Bob Rood Community Center. This time around candidates for Nye County Commissioner of Districts 1 and District 4, Nye County Recorder and Nevada Assembly District 36 made their pitch to the voters. First up was Deborah Beatty, who's running for re-election as Nye County Recorder. Eileen Prudon, who'd also filed to run for recorder but did not appear for the debate, Beatty told the audience her experience makes her the right person for the job. Hey, okay, my name is Deborah Beatty. I am your current Nye County Recorder. I have lived in Prague since 1994. I was a town escrow officer. Uh, went on to get my real estate license before I ran for office, and here I've been the recorder for 12 years. Next, the audience heard from the Republican candidates for Nye County Commissioner District 4, including incumbent Leo Blundo, Ron Boscovich, and Nirmara Quintero in what was at times a spirited debate. All three spoke of their vision for Nye County Commission. I want to make a change, many change in parole, and bring everything they need. I don't want parole to be the back door of Vegas. And we deserve everybody pay taxes, and we deserve have all the services in our necessities, that community necessities. We need to stop the corruption that's happening in that department and elsewhere in Nye County. We are wasting and throwing away hundreds of thousands of millions, maybe, of dollars that could be used for roads, schools, wherever it might be uh, needed. That is my first and primary goal. Um, secondly, to bring some of the things that we need here in Knight County. I definitely do not want Las Vegas here. Um, that's just how I feel, but there are things we need to do and need here locally. We don't know what's coming before the board in the next four years. What you do know is, is you have a tried true conservative here. My voting record over the last three and a half years has shown exactly where I stand. I fight for the people. We get roads done. We hold the budget, over $120 million of your taxpayer dollars, accountable, okay? These are the things that we're doing. You need somebody who's in the position, in the office, who actually is going to vote to get things done. The two Republican candidates for Nye County Commissioner District 1, incumbent Bruce Jabor and challenger Trevor Dolby, also tried to sell themselves to voters. Both were clear when asked about receiving donations from special interest groups who might have an item up for vote before commissioners. Just recently, we were at the Lincoln Day dinner, and I was approached by somebody in attendance, of course. He introduced himself to me. And he said, Commissioner Jabor, I understand that you don't accept anybody's contributions. I said, that is correct. But I graciously thank anybody that offers. He said to me, well, then I'm of no use to my special interest group. Do you know what he meant by that? Because I certainly knew what he meant by that. And I smiled and shook his hand and thanked him for introducing himself to me. And I walked away and I was very happy that that happened because I know that I'm doing the right thing for me. So I'm not interested in the special interest groups. If it makes sense, it's an agendized item. I'm going to vote in the affirmative. If it makes sense, and it makes sense for you. And if it doesn't make sense, the vote is no. It's pretty simple. Commissioners, this is representative government and we are to represent the people not the special interests. And what he said is absolutely right. If there is a conflict or even a special interest, we're to look for where the people's advantage is, where the people's benefit is. And if anybody offers me help, 
I know I do. And finally, voters got to hear from the two Republican candidates for Nevada State Assembly District 36, including incumbent Gregory Hafen II and challenger Matt Sadler, who each spoke about their qualifications for the job. I have a proven record. Uh, I've been to Carson City. I'm now running for my third term. Um, I've served on, on Ways and Means, the Interim Finance Committee, uh, Health and Human Service, and formerly Taxation is now called Revenue. Um, I've also served in three special sessions, which have not been very kind to Republicans. Uh, I'm sure you guys saw the governor shut us down, called us at a special session. The next thing is, is I know a lot of you know that I've introduced a bill for voter ID. It's long overdue, and we need it in the state of Nevada. The voters demand it, and we're going to do it. I love the state. I want to represent the people of Nevada. Um, born and raised conservative ever, ever since I was able to vote. I've revered the Constitution. I see you know, playing out in real life what I was always afraid of, having a tyrannical government, too big of a government, invading all avenues of our lives. And I believe we need principled conservative leadership in Carson City. I've always believed in the Constitution. I've always believed in conservative principles, and they work. Thursday night's debate caps off a three-week schedule of debates, which gave Nye County Republican candidates a chance to woo voters. The Nevada primary election is June 14th. And, of course, you can see all of those debates that were held by the Nye County Republican Central Committee on our KPVM Facebook and YouTube channels. Well, 13 individuals were arrested during a two-day Internet sexting from April 26th to the 27th. The Internet Crimes Against Children joint operation consisting of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Vice Section and numerous federal partners caught these individuals by posing as children online. After being solicited for sex, a meeting was set. The suspects were then arrested. Police say, parents, please take the time to talk to your kids about the dangers posed by strangers online and routine review their social media chat histories. Well, Stacy Conti Salway, an offender who walked away from Gene Conservation Camp on March 24th of 2020, is now in custody. The Nevada Department of Corrections Inspector General's Office, with the help of the Pacific Southwest Regional Fugitive Task Force of the United States Marshal Service, apprehended her in Vacaville, California. Conti Salway was booked into the Salino County Jail on Wednesday, April 27th. Conti Salway was serving five to 20 years for burglary and robbery out of Lyon County. A court date for additional charges was held today. News 25 will return right after this break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. This segment is brought to you by Higher Society Smoke Shop in Las Vegas. Call 702-982-2300. Call 702-982-2300. Well, a man is under arrest after insisting he needed to reach Area 51 at the Nevada National Security Site. Christopher L. DaCosta has been arrested for trespass not amounting to burglary. On April 21st, an officer was called to the Nevada security site. Upon arrival, the officer saw SOC security with the suspect later identified as El DaCosta. El DaCosta insisted that he needed to go to Area 51 to speak with someone. The officer told El DaCosta that he was trespassing on federal property and asked if he saw the no trespassing signs located off the US 95 exit. Due to his insistence that he needed to get to Area 51 and his reluctance to leave, the officer placed Alda Costa under arrest for continuously insisting that he would travel to the Nevada security site to reach his final destination. Well, following complaints by Southside neighbors, something may be getting done about the large unlicensed dog breeding facility on Pahrump South Side, but is out of sight, out of mind, enough for these large dogs being held in a for-profit facility? The caretaker of the animals was concerned that the dogs were not eating. Several animal rescue groups came forward to feed them, Desert Haven Animal Society, Nye County Animal Control, Never Forgotten Animal Rescue, and Nevada Voters for Animals got involved and have been helping with the sick and starving dogs. Vasily Platinov, owner of East Alpha Kennels in Pahrump, has been in district court before Judge Robert Lane for status checks on his year-long case to move his breeder operation out of town. Judge Lane ordered the move to Amargosa after an agreement was reached in court with his attorney Tom Gibson. Over 200 large Caucasian Shepherd dogs are the subject of this case. The breeder has been having difficulties feeding and housing the animals, which he sells all over the world through his website. The dogs he sells are mostly used for security. Neighbors on the south side of Pahrump complained and brought Platinoff to court, 
to stop what they call constant barking and odor in the neighborhood over his unlicensed operation. Platinov's attorney arranged to relocate the dogs. During his recent court hearing, over 100 dogs still have not been moved. There are approximately 100 dogs in Pahrump and 130 in Amargosa. According to sources, his caretaker in Amargosa is concerned that the dogs have not been fed properly and medical issues have not been addressed. This information alerted animal rescues who responded to help. We caught up with District Attorney Chris Arabia to find out what the county is doing to help. You know, I understand that there are a lot of issues swirling around with all that right now. Um, I don't want to comment on the number of animals or anything like that. Um, we're here at this point to support animal control in the sheriff's office. And uh, if they call us and they need help with anything, you know, we'll be there to help them. And if it turns out that they refer something to us, um, an animal cruelty case, I think everybody knows my policy on animal cruelty cases. We will deal with it harshly and uh, appropriately. Beth Kakavulia says that Nye County Animal Control visited both facilities and Platinoff has relinquished over 30 dogs to Desert Haven. Never Forgotten Animal Society and Nevada Voters for Animals have donated food for these malnourished dogs. They were, they're very underweight. I want to say they're easily 30 to 50 pounds underweight depending on the animal that you look at. Uh, so right now we're working on uh, fattening them up and making them happy. We're told that some dogs have died because of fighting for food and medical issues. Now Kakavulia says that Platinov may finally be looking to spay and neuter the remaining dogs to cut down on the population. So next week, the 25th through the 1st of May, we're doing a clear the, uh, the shelter. Uh, we already have about 16 dogs that have been sponsored between uh, Nevada Realty and Personal Protection and uh, Black Wolf Canine. They've all sponsored um, the adoption fees so that people who would like to adopt a pet but just don't have that money up front, um, they can now come in and adopt and at no cost to themselves. Well, Pahrump's Wild West extravaganza is just around the corner. Because of damage at the Pahrump Valley Museum, which was caused by last summer's storms, this year's event is heading back to Petrick Park. Lori McCaslin says the show has seen a lot of changes in the last 20 years. The Wild West extravaganza. Originally, it was titled Bob Baker's Pahrump Wild West extravaganza, and that was over 20 years ago. And that started out as a basically just like a square dance or a hoe down around the time of fall festival and from a square dance in the prompt nugget parking lot to what we have today i mean it has undergone in the last 20 years some real extreme growth yeah. <laughs> in it i mean we have uh from that first dance we've got now vendors we got gunfighters um, we've always had the melodrama, uh, we usually take up the whole park, um, we bring in livestock so that people can get a whole Wild West experience because it's, it's based on the history and the roots of Pahrump, which the motto of the town used to be heart of the new Old West. Yeah. We're back at Petrick Park again. We're actually kicking off the, um, the Wild West extravaganza with a spaghetti dinner fundraiser. And that's gonna be at uh, Bob Rood Community Center Sunday, April 10th. And um, dinner will go from four to 6.30, $10 a plate. And um, at that dinner, we will also be having the uh, tickets for our rifle raffle, say that five times fast. Um, we're gonna be raffling off a Henry Golden Boy 22 rifle, and the tickets for that are 10 bucks each. We're also gonna be raffling off some bison. So if somebody wants to some good buffalo meat, um, it'll have some bison steaks and stuff, but uh, you can definitely get the tickets for that at the extravaganza. This year we have the, the Wild West, we've purchased a much smaller tent. It's kind of like the tents that they use for the, the car sales that have the windows in it and stuff. And we'll be using it for some multi-purpose things. So we've kind of scaled back and we're doing, instead of doing one melodrama, we're doing several smaller skits. That way it gives a lot more people a chance to get their hand in it and um, we'll either be doing it in that particular tent if we're not using it for some other entertainment or we'll be doing the skits out in front of the buildings that we create the Wild West Street with. This is the weekend of the 6th, 7th and 8th, so the first weekend in May. The 
extravaganza is free. It has always been free. The last few years we've been able to work it so that the melodrama and any of that type of entertainment is free. So other than, you know, anything you want to spend at the vendor booths and stuff like that is 100% free. Call Janice if you have any questions, whether it's the spaghetti dinner, the extravaganza, if you want to get involved, if you want to know about the raffles, call Janice. Janice's phone number is 775-209-5853. because that spaghetti dinner fundraiser is all passed, you can give uh, Janice Marizio a call, 209-5853. That's 775-209-5853. We'll return with your health report right after this. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. Many people are in the midst of spring allergy misery. If you also wrestle with allergens like ragweed in the fall, you'll want to start seeking relief now, according to Cleveland Clinic allergist, Dr. Sandra Hong. If you get really bad fall allergies, this would be the time that I would have you start seeing an allergist to get started with the ragweed therapy. Oral immunotherapy tablets for ragweed have been available for a few years now. The tablets need to be taken about three months before your allergy season begins in order to build up immunity and lessen symptoms. They work the same way allergy shots do. They give you small doses of the allergen so your body gets used to it. When taken daily, your body will react to the allergen less, greatly reducing or eliminating symptoms. The tiny tablets dissolve under your tongue and are taken daily prior to and during your allergy season. You come in for the first time, we monitor you for the 30 minutes, and then from there on out, you actually take it at home. Um, so you don't have to come in for a shot and you don't have to come in to be seen um, by an allergist after that. Oral immunotherapy tablets are also available for summer grass allergies and indoor dust mite allergies. Well, it's that time again. We're going to meet a local shelter pet. For today's Save a Pet, we go back inside the cat room at Desert Haven, where Darby introduces us to Suzette. Today's Save a Pet segment is made possible by Realty Executives in Action. Put the team at Realty Executives in action for you. Hi, I'm Darby here at Desert Haven Animal Society, and today we are joined with Suzette. Suzette is being a little loaf of bread cat right now. She's all cuddled up in her bed. Um, she is also a kitty that is a little bit hesitant about being picked up, but that's okay. It's pretty normal for a cat to go and feel uncomfortable in a new environment. Suzette unfortunately has actually been here since October. So having all the people come in and new people meeting her all the time probably makes her a little bit shy. Um, if you wanna come and see Suzette or any of her friends here at Desert Haven Animal Society, you can give them a call at 775-751-702 you can look them up on their Facebook page at Desert Haven Animal Society. And Suzette just wants to remind everyone that they're now open seven days a week for adoption. So come and definitely see this beautiful black and white kitty. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. All right. Well, I can't wait to see what the weekend weather has in store for us. John will tell us all about it right after the break. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios, and I put on a red tie for this on a Friday. Heck yeah. Hey, check out Fernley Fallon, Carson City, and Tonopah. Call it 68, 67, or 69 degrees. Any one of them will work for a high temperature up there today. Kind of locked in a temperate zone 
uh, marching together out in Goldfield, though, 73 degrees. 80 in Beatty and 84 in Amargosa, tying Las Vegas, but Las Vegas wins the honors for hot spot today with the low temperature tonight of 58 degrees. It's going to be a great night in Vegas. 93 out in uh, Death Valley, but here in the Paradise of Pahrump, well, it's looking like 80 wonderful degrees. 84 just a little bit earlier, west northwesterly winds at 12 miles per hour. I kind of think that's an average because there were some times this afternoon when it wasn't windy at all, and then all of a sudden, woo, here it comes, boy. Uh, sun rose this morning at 5.53. It's going to set this evening, 7.29 p.m. Look for a low tonight of just 53 degrees, and that's all right. Uh, winds out of the east-northeast, it's uh, calming down to just 7 miles per hour as we head into Saturday. It's going to be the best Saturday all week, look. Oh, there it is. Saturday, 15 mile per hour winds, temperatures at 88 degrees. Sunday looks like uh, wind's going to be kicking up just a mite. Uh, temperatures dropping down just a bit, but basically staying in the mid 80s throughout the week, other than Tuesday. Get a little weather dip, a little uh, wind excitement there on Tuesday, but uh, that's, uh, that's kind of the skinny on the next seven days. Make your plans. All right, back to the desk. Here's Deanna. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. We hope you have a wonderful weekend. Be safe out there. We'll see you back here on Monday. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Good night.